Hello, my name is Nils Jansen. I'm an assistant professor at Radboud University Nijmegen. And um, this video is about um, our thinking of dependable and robust planning, which uses methods from machine learning, artificial intelligence, and formal verification. So I'm very happy to attend this workshop. Of course, it would be nicer to do it in person, but this is the best we can do at the moment. OK, so um, this is a short outline. I'm going to first argue about our thinking of dependable and robust AI. Then I'm going to talk about a few research highlights, and then I will go to give a short summary and a short outlook. Um, let's dive into it. So what do we see is dependable AI and decision making? So um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that decision making of AI systems is affordable, correct, safe, understandable, in summary, somehow dependable. And um, we use model-based approaches. And um, so the standard idea would be to just create such a model of a AI system and um, then use formal verification or formal synthesis to um, prove that something is correct, that there is correct behavior. However, um, a very obvious problem is that to create such models, we may not have enough data or it may not be um, clean enough or, or, or maybe too large. And on top of that, these systems operate um, alongside uncontrollable factors, for instance, humans, right? So there's uncertainty and partial information, partial observability about the system and its environment. Um, and these are factors we need to account for. Um, and we didn't even talk about scalability so far because real life systems will induce models that are extremely large. And these are things we um, are going to talk about um, here. So um, we have a lot of applications that we work with. The first batch is purely academic or mostly academic in the sense that we use a lot of grid worlds, for instance, from the OpenAI Safety Gym. We use applications that relate to spacecraft motion planning, to aircraft collision avoidance, and further applications, for instance, um, on city navigation, autonomous driving, but also games like Pac-Man, for instance. We also work with a lot of um, companies on um, very related case studies in the end, for instance, in high-tech printing, bridge maintenance, maritime applications. And um, by the way, in the lower right corner, that's me trying to use a uh, construction a simulation. I failed horribly. Um, but these are things that actually relate a lot to the aforementioned academic applications, only they are kind of, uh, in some sense, more complex, which is uh, to be expected. Um, so let us look a bit into this aircraft collision avoidance, which was, I think, originally coined by Michael Kockendurfer. Um, so we have an aircraft, and um, this aircraft has a, has a private space, um, which is kind of the safe area for this aircraft. And um, there can now be an intruder. But um, because of some um, uncertainty in sensor readings, for instance, we um, have some uncertainty on um, the exact position of the intruder, which also means that in the next step, we have way more uncertainty because we don't really know where it came from, then it does another step. And then this makes it pretty complicated. Um, and we assume that um, we have an aircraft collision avoidance system that gives advice to the pilot what actions to take to avoid any collision, given all the uncertainty. And we also assume that there's no direct communication with the intruder to make it a bit simpler in the setting. Um, Let's also look at a far simpler um, kind of grid world application. So we have a taxi and a passenger, and our goal now is to find the best way to the passenger. And to make it more complicated here, we have gravel roads and cracked roads, and it's way more expensive to um, drive over gravel roads. However, so this may be the best way, um, we may also have to refuel on the way. So there's a problem because the fueling station, the gas station is surrounded by the gravel roads. On top of that, we now also have to account for randomly moving pedestrians or cyclists. And um, so this may now be the best way. We avoid everything and we refuel and we only take as much gravel as we have to. Um, now we also have a restricted view. So this means and there are some buildings and we don't really see where, what is the exact position of the cyclist and the pedestrian. So this makes it another, in another way more complicated. Um, we can capture such um, kind of goals in temporal logic constraints or in expected cost specifications. And we actually want to have both. We want to get a policy, a controller for the taxi that is safe and cost optimal. And we need to account for all the randomness and partial information in this setting. 
Let's have an even closer look. So um, what we have here is we have um, probability distributions on movements of the cyclists and the pedestrians. So we assume to have that. We want an efficient and dependable control, for instance, via neural networks of the taxi. We have partial observability um, that gives us unknown system states. And actually, we even want to collect the data, for instance, about the distributions of the movements in a safe way. The underlying model is the so-called partially observable Markov decision process, a POMDP, which is nothing else than a stochastic process where an agent um, has no, no um, ability to directly observe its um, environment, is heavily used in multiple areas. And the underlying formal problem for us is now to find a provably correct and understandable neural network controller for a POMDP. And this is what we're going to try here. So um, let's have a look how this can be done. So we have a lot of problems here. We have POMDP, policy synthesis, want a computer policy. We want to verify a neural network controller. We kind of want to have safe reinforcement learning because we want safe data collection and everything on top of that should be kind of understandable. Let's focus on the POMDP policy synthesis, which is a hard problem in itself. In general, if we have randomized policies with infinite memory that can track all the observations that we had so far, then the problem is undecidable, yet we need this kind of formalism to have optimal results. If we restrict the memory so we are able to randomize over decisions, but we only have a finite sequence of observations that we look into, then the problem is still very hard, but it's decidable, so that's better. And it's often sufficient to do it like this. Um, a very coarse intuition for us is that randomization can very often trade off memory. So by kind of averaging over decisions, we, um, uh, we um, avoid having to look into the full observation history of policies. But this is mostly a theoretical um, uh, thought about these, um, these problems that we deal with. Um, so how do we do that? We um, think of a kind of an integrated approach that uses learning and verification. So first we have a lot of rather complicated real life scenarios like autonomous driving, train systems, bridges, chip industry. And um, from these real life scenarios, we want to create models. We can do this by collecting data and then learning or by um, using some domain knowledge that we have. Now, um, after that, we want to create a controller for this kind of model or scenario. So we can do this model free or um, using the model. And the result is a classifier, a decision maker, a policy, a program, something that we can assess. To assess its correctness, we use verification. But we also want to kind of integrate the verification in the learning approach. Like this, this means we want to generate more data and um, help use the verification to actually improve the model or the policy or the controller, right? And to make it even, or for the first time, really understandable, what we do is we um, also think about, um, can we actually um, collect the data in a safe way? So we want to shield the data collection. And now coming to the understandability part, we include humans both um, in the model building process and also in kind of the, in the um, policy building process. I will not um, be able to talk about all of this in this talk, but our general schemes are neural network robustness, robust models, more robust synthesis, robust planning, safe reinforcement learning, probabilistic programming, and a human robot or human, what I call it, human model interaction. And I'm happy to talk more about these things uh, in an offline setting. Um, so using this overall approach, I will now highlight our um, concrete approaches. So let's talk about neural network controllers. Um, what is our general problem? We have a POMDP and a specification, for instance, as a temporal logic constraint. Um, we want to find a policy. We want to apply this policy to our setting to our POMDP and then use some verification or whatever to show that this um, policy satisfies our specification. Um, what we could, for instance, do in a very naive approach, we just guess some policy, we apply it, we do verification, aka model checking, and if it satisfies the spec, then we're done, and if not, we need to guess another policy. But the question is, of course, how do we guess a good policy? And our thinking was, let's use machine learning. So um, what we do now is we use what we call a policy network, and um, somehow apply this to the model. This is joint work with Steve Carr and Ufuk Toku. Um, 
But the question is how to actually employ the neural network. What we do is we use a so-called recurrent neural network because it can um, assess using its um, internal memory structure sequential data. We extract the policy from this and apply it to the POMDP. Um, then we do model checking. And if it's satisfied, we're done. But then what we do now, because we actually doing a rigorous approach like um, model checking, we are able to compute so-called so counterexamples, critical parts of the system based on the model. We use these to do some improvement of the policy. And um, then we use this um, to create more training data to improve the network. And then we continue the loop until we're done. This is published at Ichikai last year. Let me give a few details here. So um, a recurrent neural network, as I mentioned, um, we use it to learn dependencies in sequential data, sequential observation sequences. Um, we create a policy network that gives us distributions of our actions based on sequential input, sequential observation sequences. And um, having this actually creates us the policy that we need. Um, how do we improve a policy? So what we do, as I mentioned before, we identify critical states and we actually also look at critical decisions that lead to such states. Um, and then each observation that we have that um, has such a critical decision attached, for each of these, we minimize the number of different critical actions just locally. We just reshift a bit. And then we retrain the network using this improved policy. And what we get is a general picture in all our benchmarks. So the red dots, mark the probability of satisfying our spec. And the crosses mark um, the number of critical states in our system. So what you see with iterations, the probability of satisfying the spec goes up, up to one nearly, and the number of critical states goes down. It cannot be zero because we have a quantitative uncertain setting where um, zero probability or zero critical states would actually mean that we have an almost true probability, which is not something we consider here. Okay. Um, the next question that we had was, oh sure, we have a policy now that is fair, very fair to be correct, but what we actually want is we want to have it understandable. And we identify like um, three key requirements to make it explainable, understandable, and trustable. We say it should be very good to verify because um, then it gives more like means to assess the policy. Decision-making should be understandable, so comprehensible. And we should be able to assess the level of training of the neural network, right? So we're not just dealing with the black box here. And how did we do this? We extract explicitly finite state controller from a recurrent neural network using state-of-the-art approaches. Um, for this, again, we can do very efficient model checking. And then to assess the quality, we thought um, we could look at the entropy of decisions based on our model. So what we say is the following. If we have a low entropy overall on average in the decision-making, we, we think that the neural network is well-trained and we increase the precision of the finite state control extracted from the neural network. If the entropy is high, we assume that it's mostly kind of averaging, uniformly choosing some action. So it's extrapolating from data and um, we generate new training, da training data and extract a new FSC. This was published at Ichikai um, this year. We actually will be presented this week. So um, yeah, if you, I'm be happy to talk about more details here. Some examples, uh, some numerical examples very quickly. Um, what I wanted to show you just is that we are able to um, test benchmark with millions of states. So the scale is very high. Of course, this is not a complete method. We may get stuck in local optima, which rarely happens in our benchmarks here. Good. Um, Let's move to data uncertainty. So we make the problem even a bit harder now. Um, so what are uncertain POMDPs? We have uncertainty. So the question is actually, where do all these probabilities come from, right? For instance, on the movement of the cyclist or the pedestrian. Probabilities come from sensor readings, historical data. They are estimations. They are mostly point estimates and they're approximate. And they neglect, for instance, the um, in statistical and point estimations, the deviation that you have, uh, right, with a certain confidence and confidence measures. So what we say, we need to account for imprecise probabilities. And we look at so-called uncertain POMDPs, which are nothing else than uncountable set of POMDPs. Yeah, let us look to this in a bit more detail. So we call the taxi setting. And the cyclist has now not point estimates of probabilities, but ranges, intervals of probabilities. 
And then the idea is that a robust policy for such a POMDP is a single policy that is good enough for all POMDPs in this uncountable set. So it accounts for all possible probabilities in the intervals. Yeah. So this is our formal problem. You want to compute such a robust policy. So let me quickly walk you through how we do that. But first, let's look at a small example. So this is a spacecraft motion planning setting, a realistic one. And the idea is the following. There's an, a satellite, a spacecraft, is um, using certain orbits to um, around the Earth. And there may be objects that it can collide with. And um, if it, there is danger to for this to happen, the satellite needs to switch orbits yeah, if, they, if they are close to each other. And this costs fuel, right? So the switching costs fuel. And also we have partial observability over the current position of the aircraft and with uncertainty how the actual human operator will react if we say there is an object there and we should switch now. What you see in the picture is all the possible orbits around the Earth and the red line, this is the trajectory. So you, you see actually a lot of switches of orbits there. Yeah. So, so, so what we see here now, safety is not colliding, cost efficiency is not switching too often. So we have a very clear trade-off here in our setting. So what do we do? Um, this problem, robust synthesis for uncertain POMDPs, computing such robust policies, can be cast as a semi-infinite linear optimization problem with infinite many constraints, finite many variables, and also non-convex. So this is bad. What we can do is we use approaches from convex optimization to create a semi-infinite convex optimization problem, um, which is still infinite. So that's still not good. What we do is we restrict the uncertainty to convex polytopes. And um, having this for instance, intervals build such convex polytopes. And what we can do is we can use the so-called convex concave procedure to create a finite convex optimization problem. Um, we include some verification step here. This is basically interval model checking, which um, tells us, yes, it's, it's satisfied or not. And then we have to reiterate there using some results from the verification. This is joint work with my PhD student, Manik Soylen and um, Murat Chubuk Tepe and uh, Ufuk Topchu from UT Austin. This will also be presented um, at HKI. Um, so let's move on. So um, we liked this previous approach, but it was restricted to rather small settings. So um, we thought we could do a bit more. And um, at next year's I will present the following um, solution to this problem, we reformulate the whole POMDP problem towards simple POMDPs, which kind of um, detach uh, non-deterministic choices and probabilistic choices. We again get a semi-infinite linear optimization problem, but then using these simple POMDPs, we could define a dualization method that gives us a finite, still non-convex optimization problem, which then we could linearize and by directly including robust verification step, which kind of tightens variables in the setting, we got a very efficient procedure, as I will show you now. So um, using this, we could, um, for instance, for the spacecraft motion, but also for, by the way, for the um, aircraft collision avoidance I showed before, we can solve these uncertain point degrees with hundreds of thousands of states pretty efficiently. Um, what we can also kind of assess is we can really include memory, finite memory, which of course kind of blows up the computations. And what we see is that memory is really important. For instance, on the left, you see memoryless policy, um, and we have a lot of switches there, right? We need to switch orbits very often because there's imminent danger of um, uh, colliding. We cannot really assess everything, but by including memory, so we kind of assess the past positions, we are able to much more accurately assess the position of the aircraft and the objects in space. But and this is, by the way, just five steps in the past. We only need a few orbit changes, so this is much more efficient at the cost of higher computation times, but still um, it's um, for hundreds of thousands of states within uh, like 10 minutes or something like that. Um, let's give a short summary of my talk. So what I try to convey here is that we have, we have several points of view on AI dependability and safety. The key aspect I think is to really account for current shortcomings, for instance, scalability, this data uncertainty, lack of explainability, and then try to render approaches within uh, these shortcomings, around these shortcomings. Um, future work 
and current work concerns uh, direct verification in neural networks. We are looking at classifier ensembles, also for control problems. Um, I'm also always interested in more problem specific approaches. So what are the real safety features? What are the real problems? For instance, um, I'm working on predictive maintenance in several projects. I'm very curious what I learned in this workshop to see further applications or further directions. I'm always interested in using kind of the aspect of explainability to, to bring results to the user, for instance, using well-defined models, understandable models, or for instance, progressive programming-based approaches. And a general problem that I think is very important, how to actually obtain or learn models under uncertainty. That's it. Thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to the discussions in the workshop.